Hello, everyone. This is Marita, one who catches lightning with the Path of Ish podcast, Walking with Our Shadow, where we share ancient indigenous teachings of remembrance, all so we can walk and learn how to walk a path of radical self-love. Hello, everyone. This is Marita, one who catches lightning with the path of Ish, here with you another time, another day, another opportunity to sit in circle with you. Now, today I want to do things a little bit different for our start. If you've been listening to this podcast, you are familiar with how we breathe and center and welcome ourselves. Well, today I want to take that next step of coming into circleness. And so I want to take this moment at the beginning of this podcast before we represent and get into the topic that wants to sit with us today to take a moment and recognize circle and the space that we are creating together. So to do so, we are going to formally approach this podcast or this circle. So instead of just jumping in, I want you to be aware of the space that you are in. So instead of just jumping in, I want to take a few moments to create awareness of where you are and how you are in this moment of time and space. So just check. Are you sitting? Are you standing? Are you walking? What is your relationship to your space at this moment? And as you observe that, Observe if you are preoccupied with anything else. Observe if you are trying to multitask. And then observe the busyness or non-busyness of how you are approaching this circle, this space together. Now, the advantage of being in person and doing ceremonies in person and doing platicas in person is that we would have a physical representation of the circle to approach and walk into. And then you knew that we were being held by circle. We were entering a different way of being, leaving the busyness or the multitasking outside. That is why humans have created places of worship, places that means that they have to step into these buildings or these places and be different. And if you can hear my Jade Pearl, it's because she's with us again, reminding us that this time is different. Thank you, Jade Pearl, for reminding us that this time together is different. And so I invite you today to pause and check in as we enter together into this space. What can you leave outside from this podcast And what would you like to bring in? An easy way to do this. Let us all imagine a circle before us. Let's even go to a circle in nature before us. Maybe it's outlined with cornmeal. Maybe it's outlined by rocks. And if you've never been in the presence of a medicine circle or one that is created or has been created, 
I welcome you to explore this virtual opportunity and hopefully you can explore a physical opportunity soon. So I want you to imagine this circle in nature, a delineated circle by rocks or cornmeal or sticks or shells. And I want you to see what your relationship to it is spatially. Where do you find yourself naturally standing or sitting in the north, the south, the east, or the west? And remember, you are still outside of the circle. Wherever you are, I ask you to walk in a circular pattern clockwise over to the east. And here is where we will ask to enter into this space. Many First Nations have different songs or prayers for this, but today, just in your heart of hearts, can you, in your own words, ask Circle to enter, recognizing that you are entering into a time of sacredness with yourself, with those around the world listening, with nature who holds us, with circleness who holds us and invites all parts of ourselves. And once you hear or feel circleness inviting you in, step in. Imagine yourself stepping in and leaving everything else outside, behind. And once you step in, find a comfortable place for you to sit, whether you want to walk down to the south, the west, or up to the north, and imagine yourself sitting there. And as you now sit and collect yourself, let us bring our three parts together, first as individuals, and then as a collective. So we welcome ourselves as we welcome all of life with breath. Let us take our three breaths together, beginning now. This first breath we are taking in and out through the nose. We welcome our mind into this time, into this space, into this circle. In and out through the nose, welcoming our body into this time, into this space into this circle. In and out through the nose, welcoming our essence into this time, into this space, into the circle. And as each of us collectively invite ourselves, we then allow circleness to invite all of us our collective minds, our collective bodies, our collective essence and the intelligences into this time, this space. As we welcome the topic of discussion today, the platica. Now this is a platica, a conversation that I've had many, many times over my life, through my life, with many people. And it seems that currently it is very much in the conscious collective in a very new and different way, or can I say with a little bit more pressure attached to it. It is one of the conversations I wanted to have when I started mapping out the platicas for this podcast, and it has taken its time coming in. So we welcome that now is the time. Now we can be held. And the conversation and the platica today is about success and perfectionism. I want you to just allow those two words to enter into the circle, and I want you to feel into your reaction of them. 
I want you to stay curious about your story and relationship to them and your definition of them and where or who informed you of this definition and how was it played out in your life, the reinforcement of this need of what we call or the collective conscious calls, or the dominant culture in some areas, in Western areas, calls success. Now, if we relate to this amazing books of language or dictionaries, the Oxford Dictionary defines that success as a noun is the accomplishment of aim or purpose. And I want you to feel into the energy of this. Is success circular energy? Or is it linear energy? When you talk about aim, what else do you aim things at. You aim at targets. And usually when you are trying to hit your target, your end, your purpose, you are launching arrows or things that are linear, bullets, And yes, in the olden days, bullets, some bullets were circular. But the trajectory of whatever you are launching many times to quote unquote meet that target means that it has to have a beginning and an end. And that beginning and the end is usually separated by distance that you can cover in a linear fashion. Now remember, we're sitting in circleness. So this energy and feeling should feel very different. Feel into circleness and the idea of success. Feel into the energy of aim, of moving forward as success. And these are the two visualizations that I want you to have throughout this podcast is can you feel into what it's like to come back to yourself versus move away from yourself to a so-called destiny? Now to compound this conversation. I want to bring in the story that many times I feel is so woven into a way of accomplishing success, and that is perfectionism. I want you to feel into that word perfectionism. And what shape, size, or energy does it have? The Oxford Dictionary defines perfectionism as a noun, a refusal to accept any standard short of perfection, or as a philosophy, which is a doctrine holding that religious moral, social, or political perfection is attainable, especially the theory that human moral or spiritual perfection should be or has been attained. We go through perfectionism into the psychological Wikipedia (laughs) definition. It talks about perfectionism in psychology 
is a broad personality style characterized by a person's concern with striving for flawlessness and perfection and is accomplished by critical self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluations. Okay, there's a lot here in the circle now. First, we started with success. Success gave us that feeling of linear movement, of destiny, of aim, of forward movement. Then we welcomed perfectionism. So here we have this forward movement of hitting a target, and we welcome perfectionism as a way of success. And the energy here is that in theory, it should be possible. And then we add to the collective idea that self critical self evaluation and then concern regarding others' evaluations is part of perfectionism. Whoa. That's a lot of people in the circle determining your destiny. There's a lot of pressure here connected to purpose. And so many conversations that I have with people are regarding their destiny. Where am I going, Marita? What am I doing? Where is this spiritual path taking me? I need to know. I need to get it figured out. Or people coming of like, I need to get this and this done. Let's move on. I need to move on from this. There's this energia that comes into the circle of this linear trajecting of moving beyond yourself as an attempt to succeed because of the self-critical nature that drives us beyond or others' critical nature that drives us beyond. And this idea and philosophy that teaches us that to move beyond ourselves means we are successful. At the core of this movement of moving beyond is this idea of lack. This idea that at this present moment now, we cannot be. So many times when we are making plans, they are based on our reaction from the past or making goals. So we find ourselves as humans living in the past and in trying to fix it, planning for the future. And we are never presently here. We do not take the time outside of our tasks to live. Instead, we are focused on success, on perfectionism, attaining that ideal or idea of who we should be, never accepting ourselves in the moment. Just breathe. Just check in with yourself right now. Let's take our three breaths again as we let this settle. Check in, in and out through your nose. How's my mind doing with all of this? In and out through the nose. How's my body doing with all of this? In and out through the nose. How is my essence doing with all of this? Okay, 
If you need to do that again, please do that again. And just breathe. So as we feel into these palabras, este soplo, these breaths, soplo, breaths, these three breaths, this three breath practice that we have. Connecting all of that which we have breathed, these words, these imageries. I want to introduce into the circle a different movement. This is not yet the movement of walking around in a circle because that might be very foreign to you if you are not First Nation. But I want to borrow some imagery from the Romans. And that imagery is of their road. The reason is I am recording this podcast at the time of A, which is the road in the Mayan calendar. And since we're talking about destiny and travel, it is a perfect time to bring in la energía del camino, E. Before we go into the discussion of the Mayan calendar part of it or the Nahual of it, the reason that I want to use this imagery of Rome and roads is because almost all nations were affected by Rome in some way, especially on the European continent and some other continents as well. And the idea of Rome. Rome had this saying, all roads lead to Rome. And so if you feel into that, their expansion, their colonization, included a directionality of not just moving outward, but returning back to the center and having Rome become that center for all peoples. Now, it's a little bit of a hmm, packed imagery there. But the reason that I'm using it is because it will be in your collective, in many people's collective DNA somewhere there. And so I speak to that part for you to remember. That movement, not just of outward expansion, but bringing things home. Let's take away for a moment the other effects Rome had. But I just want to play and stay curious with this, right? So I want you to now feel into the idea of all roads lead, let's say, to home, not to Rome. And now that idea of success as destiny the idea of perfectionism, of aim, of purpose, of becoming, becoming that which you want to be. And what if we then brought in the beautiful imagery of E, eh, of road, where here the connection is to that road, that destiny being you. So as we put both of these beautiful imageries, images together, one on top of each other, we layer them. We start to weave this idea that our destiny and the possibility of our destiny, whether you are Eurocentric or First Nation, could be, if you stay curious, that destiny could be you. Just check in again with your body, your mind, and your essence. 
Take your three breaths, tres soplos. And as that is woven in, we have now the opportunity of imagining this arterial system, right? If we imagine these roads, all of these roads leading to the center, I imagine the body, the arterial and the the veins of the body leading to and from the heart, your heart, your physical heart. And so now I can, as I sit with all of this and I sit with all of you, we can start imagining that maybe our destiny isn't just the movement outwards, but the movement inwards, just like our heart pumps out and receives. And so I welcome you to put your hand on your heart right now. As your brain connects to that flow of energy out and in, that same flow as when you breathe out and breathe in, that circular flow of giving and receiving, of things being sent out, information being sent out in the nervous system and coming back to the brain. These centers, these roads that lead back to these centers, your home, the home of your mind, the home of your body, the home of your essence. Ah, here we can start having and introducing that our relationship with success and destiny might be our potential possibility to imagine information coming out and coming in breath coming out and coming in, blood flowing out, coming in, a flow, a circular flow of beingness is actually part of our nature. And if we can tap into that which is natural, to us, this circular flow, we can start looking at success, destiny, and perfectionism, hopefully in a very different way. And so with that, I want to invite us to our meditation for this podcast. And as you keep your hand over your heart, I just want you to feel into the rise and the fall of your chest as you breathe in and out. As that information goes back to your mind, processing. as just the breath flowing in and out allows you to calm that information down. Filter that information as you accept, as you receive, as you let go, as you send out. Because we began today at one point speaking about destiny as this aim and target. I want you during this meditation to aim for that heart center. What can you bring in here to your circleness, your flow of circleness today? filtering in through your suspiro, your breath. So with that, let us take 
these three breaths. El soplo. Three breaths. Practice. Breathing in and out through the nose. Bringing our mind and welcoming it back into this time and space. In and out through the nose. Bringing back and welcoming our body into this time and space. In and out through the nose. Bringing back our essence, welcoming it back to this time and space as we sit in the circle that we asked permission to be in, knowing that it is holding our sacredness, knowing that Mother Earth is holding us in that which is natural for us, our nature, our circular Tory nature, our natural rhythm and ebb and flow of circleness. Ahí está, muy bien. Y con eso, with that, I want you to imagine a time where I want you to imagine your present moment. And what you think or visualize your destiny to be, or where you have in the past visualized your destiny to be. And can you, in this visualization, instead of looking outwards as walking to something outside of yourself, can you turn that aim back at you? What can walk in? What can you allow in? What parts of yourself and your nature can you allow to be with you now? Outside of the criticism of others and yourself outside of these ideas of destiny that lead you away from yourself. Hmm. Keep breathing, keep believing. Keep breathing, keep believing. Can we bring in knowingly that doctrine, which is religious, moral, political, or social, this idea, this morality of what we should be? How many people are informing that and can we let go of that story? Can we let go of striving? Can we let go of the criticism? Keep breathing in and out. And as we do that, we bring in the energia of E, of that road. We bring in the energia of the mountain lion. El Caminante that wanders and walks everywhere, always being at home with itself, always knowing it is home wherever it is, whether it's on a mountaintop, whether it's walking along a stream or river or by the ocean, it is perfectly in its own nature at all time. 
Thank you, mountain lion. Thank you, eh. Thank you, road. For allowing us to reimagine the possibility of all roads lead to home. The home of my heart. The home of my body. The home of my mind. My intelligence. The home of my essence, my body right now, all of this moving in that circular fashion as we learn and receive, learn and receive, filtering out the criticism, filtering out colonization, filtering out Whoever told you, whoever gave you those rules of what you should attain that actually leads you outside of yourself. <sighs> keep breathing, keep believing. And with that, we slowly start coming back. As you feel into your space right now, into the circle that was set at the beginning of class, the sacred space. So with that, we thank circle. We think all of the elements and all the directions of the east, the south, the west, and the north for holding us, for giving us that image today of that possible, beautiful energy of returning back home to ourselves and how in our nature, our body does that. And with that gratitude and grace, take your three breaths in and out through the nose. Thanking your essence for being in this time and space, in and out through the nose. Thanking your body for being in this time and space. In and out through the nose. Thanking your mind for being in this time and space. And as you do that, imagine yourself gathering yourself wherever you are sitting in the circle that we have created, walking clockwise around till you come to the east, exiting, bowing to circleness, thanking for holding this platica, this time, this possibility, these breaths that remind us to come home. I hope that the rest of your day is one where all roads lead to home. I hope that this rest of this week, that you can come back and every time that you feel yourself leaving to your destiny, you can return back to your three breaths, to el soplo, this three breath practice that you are learning here. And you can remember that all roads lead to home, to you. You are your destiny. To all my teachers, to all my ancestors who are forever present in these podcasts in this circle and who continue to guide me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shaday. Once again, it is with deepest gratitude that I bow to you for joining me on this podcast, this episode, this circle, this 
plática, this meditation, this remembering. I hope that you have stayed curious. I hope to see you in the circle again next week. So make sure that you like or follow. Until then, may you be blessed with abundance of peace and radical self-love.